Ted Howell and Brian Connors back with Law Call. And just remember those phone lines are open, 850-392-1544. Or you can email us at lawcall at wmbb.com. And I believe during the break, we might have gotten another email question. My mother was in a wreck. She is expected to recover in a month or two. There may be some health complications. We aren't sure yet. The driver of the truck that hit her says he blew a tire and lost control. We filed a claim with the company's insurance and are waiting for more info. A friend who had a similar scenario advised not getting a lawyer. He thinks he could have netted more without one. Is this unrealistic? And this is from Wayne. Um, Wayne, there's a couple parts there. First, Brian, if you would, I know you've actually had the case with the, with the blown out tire. If you could talk about a little bit about the, um, the, the issues you there, have in a case like that. Yeah, there are a lot here, uh, but I think one of the most common things I hear uh, my clients hear from a driver who rear ends them is my brakes went out and their brakes never go out. They're just not paying attention. So whether or not this guy actually blew out a tire and that caused him to lose control is question number one. Um, it does happen. We've had cases where there are, you know, people don't rotate their tires. You actually don't um, replace your tires when you're supposed to. I know I need to get my tires um, replaced <laughs> now. Um, but there's also defects in tires where like the melting process to actually create them, there's an issue. It, it will cause them to blow out or you can hit something and it blows out. There's a number of things that can cause tires to blow out. In that situation, the person may or may not be responsible. They probably still are responsible at the end of the day. Um, but that is a, a very potentially complicated case. So getting a lawyer involved, uh, number one, is just good so you can be adequately advised on you know, what the, the claims you have. Because if the manufacturer of the tire right. you know, had a defect in it and this person isn't at fault or doesn't have enough insurance, you might have a claim against the tire manufacturer. And I will tell you, it's very unlikely to you know, handle a claim like that without a lawyer. I think a lot of the tires, I know on the case I had, are manufactured in Japan. Right, and so. you're talking about a products liability case at this point, which is very, very heavily expert driven. Yes. And, it's, and you have to make sure you have the right person and you have to make sure that, that evidence is properly preserved and you have a proper chain of custody. And there are a lot of issues and a lot of pitfalls that you can fall into. And if you make any one mistake, you can potentially jeopardize the entirety of the claim. Um, it's not unusual in a case like these to see someone who uh, commits spoliation of evidence and doesn't maintain the tire properly before it can be adequately tested so that everyone can make an actual decision on whether or not this was a defect or tires blow. I mean, actually yeah, it happen. does happen. Yeah. I mean, so you wanna make sure if that did in fact happen, that it is properly preserved and then properly tested by a competent professional, one who not only has the skill set to look at the tire and make that determination on a technical basis, but can also explain it in layman's terms yes. to someone else uh, <laughs> ultimately because that's what is required to have a good expert in a case, one not only that can figure it out and understands what he needs to do, but can also explain it where it makes sense to us normal people. Normal people, <laughs> uh, a jury potentially, um, but also to the other side. If, if we have a right. case like this, there's a defense attorney involved. They, we want our expert to be able to explain it in simple terms to anybody. Mm -hmm. You know, going down the elevator and explaining 20 seconds what caused it right. to fail. Uh, but another interesting part of this question is, um, is it worth it to get a lawyer? Right. Um, I would say, you know, if you have a medical issue, it's probably worth it to contact the doctor. If you have a legal issue, it's probably a good idea to at least speak with a lawyer to understand what your options are. So right. in this case, um, I'm guessing Wayne and, you know, his mother might not even know there's a potential claim against right. the manufacturer of the tire. You might know not know all the different layers of insurance we talked about. You might not know what your own insurance does. And then another thing that stands out to me is there could be some health complications. Um, for us, we deal with broken bones and injured spines all the time, but every now and then we have a complication where someone's had a stroke after a car wreck. Right. And is that related? Or a heart complication where a, a heart injury occurs and someone has to have open heart surgery. So if it's a complicated injury, insurance companies, car insurance companies, don't say, oh, this is definitely caused by the car wreck. So if you have a legal issue, I almost always recommend speaking with an attorney right. because lawyers like us will 
we'll give you a free consultation and kind of advise you at a minimum of what your options are. Right, and like you just said, it's the, the danger is you don't know what you don't know. <laughs> um, and you know, look, I don't try to do my own plumbing. I don't try to do my own electrical <laughs> work. I, I defer to professionals in those scenarios, and, and we are the professionals in this type of arena.